quartic equations have the highest power of x as 4. Um, we're going to be looking at sketching quartic graphs today, which is going to be very similar to when we sketch quadratic and cubic graphs. There's just a different shape of graph and obviously a different amount of roots. Positive quartic graphs start from positive infinity on the left and return to positive infinity on the right. They can have 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4 roots. Negative cubic graphs start from negative infinity on the left and return to negative infinity on the right. Let's work through these questions. There are three things we need to know to sketch a quartic graph. The roots, the y-intercept and the shape. To find the roots, we solve when the equation equals zero. We can get each bracket equal to zero. So we're going to have x plus 1 equals zero and so therefore x will be minus 1, x plus 2 equals 0, x will be minus 2, x minus 1 equals 0, x will be 1, and x minus 2 equals 0, x will be 2. Next, to find the y-intercept, we substitute 0 as x, so our y-intercept for this question will be 4. There are a couple of ways to find the shape. You could expand the brackets and see the sign on the coefficient of the x to the power of 4, or you can substitute a really large positive and really large negative number into the quartic and see the signs of the answers. A large positive number gives a positive answer for this, but a large negative number also gives a positive answer. Our quartic is therefore positive. We can now draw the graph. Positive quartics start high and end high. The roots are minus 2, minus 1, 1 and 2, uh, because these are our x-intercepts. And our y-intercept is 4. Make sure to label these values onto the graph. I'm going to start by solving the equation when it equals 0 to find the roots. Notice that the second bracket is cubed, so it's times by itself 3 times. So we're just going to have that bracket 3 times. Solve by getting each of those brackets equal to 0. Next, to find the y-intercept, we substitute in x as 0, and we see that the y-intercept will be 2. And finally, to find the shape, we substitute in a really big positive number and a really big negative number. Both of these will give us a negative answer, so we know it's going to be a negative quartic. It's going to start low and end low. Notice that this has a triple repeated root. A double root, a double repeated root, would make it skim the x-axis, but a triple one makes it want to skim it, but also cross it. So it looks something like this. At uh, x equals minus 1, you can see it sort of going horizontal there, but still crossing the axis. And then x equals 2 is just a normal root. The y-intercept will be 2, so we need to make sure we label that as well. In this question, we have a quadratic in the first bracket and a quadratic in the second bracket. And we need to have the quartic fully factorised for us to sketch the graph. So we're just going to factorise the first um, quadratic and factorise the second quadratic and then get it equal to zero to find the roots. Next, we're going to get each of those brackets equal to zero and we get the roots of x equals 2, x equals 2, x equals minus 3 and x equals minus 1. To find the y-intercept, we're just going to substitute in 0, and we get our y-intercept as 12. And finally, to find the shape, we put in a really large positive number and a really large negative number, and they're both positive, so our quartic will be positive. It will start high and end high. Then when we draw the graph, notice that at x equals 2, it doesn't cross the line because it's a repeated route. It goes down and then up again. It sort of skims it. And we need to make sure to finish this question by putting in our y-intercept. Let's finish on this question. We've got y equals x minus 2, x plus 3, x squared plus 5x plus 10. And we're told it only has two roots. Explain how you can tell this without drawing the graph. If you know, write it in the comments below. And you can also come to onmaths.com or click the link in the description where you can access all of our free A-level papers and predictions and you can even save your scores with a free account. This video is part of a larger A-level course that you can follow along with at onmaths.com.